everyone and welcome back to a new video. For today's video I will be reading your unpopular musical theatre opinions. I asked you all over on Instagram and if you aren't following me there already, go ahead and click, the link will be here. I asked you to send me your unpopular musical theatre opinions and I thought today I will read them and react and share my thoughts on them. I have had a sneaky little look already and picked some of my favourite ones and I'm so excited to share them with you. Some of you were brutal. I have previously done an unpopular musical theatre opinions of my own, click the link above to go watch that. If you've already watched it, let's get on with this video. If you're new here, hello, I'm Jennifer Glatzofer, please hit that subscribe button and the like button if you enjoy this video. I still find it really odd that I have to say that, but apparently that's what motivates people to click on the button. I have put together comments that are of the same musical or the same topic together, so hopefully we can talk about it all in once rather than going back and forwards. But anyway, let's start. Oh, we have two wicked ones. Wicked ones. <laughs> we have some talking about Adina's voice. Well, let's have a look. Wicked destroyed Adina's voice because her technique wasn't good enough and Adina Menzel isn't that great. So we all know I love Wicked. That's a given. Adina Menzel is what everyone heard in the first cast recording. She is the voice of Alphaba that everyone knows. Now, there have been many Alphabas since then that have incredible voices and they all do their own little riffs, their own little takes on Alphaba, which is great. Let's focus on Adina. <laughs> if you don't know who I'm talking about, she originated the role of Alphaba in Wicked on Broadway and she's also the voice of Elsa in Frozen. She has a very distinctive voice, but I feel like especially when she's singing live, there are several clips <laughs> around on YouTube that don't show her at her best. Everyone has their off days, that's a given, that's allowed, we can, you know, forgive them and allow that to be in our mind when we listen to them sing. However, singing something like Alphaba eight times a week, you have to be prepared for it, you have to be in the right ability to sing it, the right uh, vocal training, and it is a big task. You are belting such high notes, which if not done correctly, if done unsafely, can lead to vocal damage. Hence why this comment <laughs> has risen, and so is this one. Be more chill deserves so much more love. Right, this is a musical I don't know much about. I think the first song I was aware of was Michael in the Bathroom. I think a lot of people covered it. Uh, it was everywhere. So I gave the music a listen to. All I remember thinking is that it was very poppy, like, I don't know how to describe it. It kind of sounded almost techno, is that the word? And I didn't, that's not my style, so I kind of kept pushing it back. I didn't give, I didn't listen to it fully. I just kind of, you know, I never put the time in to listen to. I did, however, start listening to it yesterday when I saw this, mm, this pop-up, and I decided to give it a listen to. I read the synopsis, and it sounds very familiar, like a story that we already know. Right, we've got onto some lame is ones. <laughs> Hugh Jackman has too much vib. I mean, we're talking about the movie Lame Is now. For those of you that haven't seen it, it is a top cast musical. Is that how it all cast musical? All star musical? How do you say it? It was <laughs> just a bunch of names. <laughs> I mean, I don't think Hugh Jackman is the worst singer in that. Um, there are many other names that probably there's another example of someone who has <laughs> lots of vib in that movie but yeah lame is the movie is a travesty and lame is is overrated so lame is is quite a few people's favorite musical and rightly so it is an amazing musical it's not one of my top favorites which i know is probably a shock because actually quite a few musical theatre people do love Les Mis. I have never actually seen it live. I know. Who am I? <laughs> Who am I? I don't even mean to do that. <laughs> I do need to go see it live. I feel like that will redeem <laughs> the movie. Saying that it's overrated, a lot of people do love it so each their own opinions. We can all love what we love and when something is overrated I think it's down to that it's, there is a hype over it because it's reached into non-musical theatre land and everyone knows about it. I feel like everyone does know the movie a lot more than the stage version, which is why maybe it has a 
sort of bad rep about it. Oh, this is a good one. Evan doesn't deserve redemption. What he did was too unforgivable. Again, I don't want to spoil Dear Evan Hansen for you. I'm guessing that's where Evan's from. <laughs> but I'm gonna have to agree with this one. When you first listen to the cast recording, you're in bits, you're crying, it's emotional, it's a lot to deal with, and you genuinely do feel sorry uh, for everything that's going on. But when you actually know the backstory, now that's a, that's that's something else. I've been to see Dear Evan Hansen in the West End, and I can understand where this comment is coming from. I felt some, I was like, really? Like why? I mean, it doesn't end the way you think it's going to end. But there is a sort of forgiveness element, and maybe actually when you think about it, like, again, I'm trying to say this without spoiling things because the, the recording isn't the big picture. There is so much more that, ha that happens. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, buy tickets when you can <laughs> and everything's open again. But yes, I'm gonna have to agree. I wasn't a fan of Dear Evan Hansen when I watched it in New York. Again, I watched it in West End. I loved it. I don't know how the New York cast uh, how the Broadway cast were, who was playing Evan. I really enjoyed it. I watched uh, Sam Tutty as Evan and I thought the way he acted everything um, and portrayed the character of Evan was so, so good. So I really enjoyed it. Each their own opinion. <laughs> Although I loved basically everything about Hamilton, Lynn was the worst part. Uh... Lynn manuel has the most annoying voice. Right, well very strong opinions here. <laughs> so obviously the Hamilton film came out on Disney Plus earlier this year, so a lot of people viewed Hamilton live on Broadway as it was filmed. <laughs> Lin-Manuel is a very talented man. He, you know, I love In the Heights. Most people know that. <laughs> Hamilton, you know, bring it on. He did so much, he's done so much and he's very, very talented. A lot of people know that. I don't think he's bad, but there were definitely moments in the film, especially when things got a little bit emotional, I was just questioning the choices. Let's leave it as that. But we sort of, you know, forgive it and allow it to be because he created such an amazing piece. And also, if you've created this, cast yourself in it. Anyone would do that. So for that, applaud. <laughs> Peggy needs more recognition. 100% agree. I always felt like the character just goes and I'm like, where is she? What happens? Riffing should be for select moment, not constantly throughout a song. Thank you. 100% agree with this. When someone's riffing throughout the whole song, the you know, the meaning of the song completely goes and you don't understand what's going on. It's just covered with all these lovely riffingness, but it's just, it just takes it away from the message. It just takes away the message of the song. If you are including a riff, it has to make sense with the song or where you're putting that riff. Obviously, if you want to change up an, a, an existing riff, for example, yeah, at the end of, of The Wizard and I or Defying Gravity or other songs that just wicked came into my mind, but if you want to change up a riff, go for it. But I think when it, I think what this person means, it's when it's just added everywhere and it just takes away from the actual song and it just becomes a riffing masterpiece, but just doesn't make any sense. Not every show deserves a standing ovation. They should be kept for shows that really move you, otherwise I feel like they lose their meaning. Ooh. I love standing up and clapping at the end of a performance. It will take a lot for me to not like a performance and stand up. I probably very rarely will not stand up and clap, so I apologise for that, this person. <laughs> I do understand that it loses its magic after standing up, you know, after every performance, but also, how do you know that people stand up after every performance? Hmm. <laughs> I mean, I just admitted it, but you know. It does take a lot for me to not like a certain piece of theatre. And I guess in those circumstances, I might not stand up. But after witnessing just such magic on the stage, I do feel like they deserve a standing ovation and a little clap. There you go. <laughs> we have... <sighs> Go. Andrew Lloyd Webber is overrated, very overrated. Joseph and the Amazing Technicolor Dreamcoat is hot garbage. All of Andrew Lloyd Webber's musicals sound like nursery rhymes. They're musicals made for children. Savage. <laughs> well, I hope you're forgetting the greatness of Jesus Christ Superstar and School of Rock that are my top Andrew Lloyd Webber musicals. <laughs> However, 
yes, let's look at Joseph and the Technicolor Dreamcoat. It is very pleasant to the ear, the melodies, they're very, you know what's gonna come, it's very predictable. There's nothing wrong with that. People go to the theater to escape and they enjoy that. That's why Andrew Webber does so well. Having said that, maybe for people who have tested the waters and seen and heard other composers and lyricists and musicians and their takes on their own musical writing, things have obviously slightly improved maybe <laughs> but you cannot slate jesus christ superstar or school of rock that you cannot understudies are underrated and can be a lot stronger than the lead for example Anne juliet now i've never seen Anne juliet so i don't know what who I, I know who the lead is but i don't know like who the understudy was i've never actually seen that live however i do agree with the statement which is understudies are sometimes overlooked and whenever one sees that an understudy is playing the role of the main character people do tend to get a little bit upset angry or you know they're not seeing the person that they thought they were going to see why i do not know understudies are just as important if not you know they do so much they might not even be understudying that one person they might be understand under understudying that's such a hard word to say after a while <laughs> basically they've got other tracks that they're probably understudying as well depending on the show depending on the cast number whatnot but understudies are just as important and like this person has said sometimes are better suited for the role than the actual lead actor that's playing that character I don't know and Juliet like I mentioned so I'm not sure about this circumstance but understudies definitely need more recognition singing in the rain productions are never as good as the film I've never seen singing in the rain live which I wish I did singing in the rain is one of my favorite films so yes I will always go back to the film and if this person has said that singing in the rain productions are never the set never how do they put it are never as good as the film then hopefully I get the chance to see and make my own opinions on it and also you're missing Gene Kelly so big shoes to fill Greece is the worst Ooh. <laughs> I think you have to be in the right mind frame to watch Greece certainly once you've watched other musicals maybe you could look back at Greece and think what was I thinking I think you just have to be in the right like I'll probably put it on sing along to the songs but you're not you know it's not the best it's not amazing would I say it's the worst no because it lifts me up when I'm feeling down so <laughs> No. I get scared when they come into the audience. <laughs> now I know the person who said this and she is someone that gets scared when I play minor chords on the piano. Which is the whole point of minor chords is, you know, they're meant to represent something scary or uneasy. So thank you for proving that right. <laughs> yes, I, I feel like I agree. I get a bit, when it's an interactive or immersive piece of theatre, I'm gonna hide behind someone. I don't want to be dragged. I don't want to be touched. I just want to sit down and watch. I do like going to them. I do like going and witnessing any type of theatre. But when I go, I need to be prepared and make sure that there's someone standing here and someone standing here <laughs> that aren't actors because they're gonna jump out and do something so. <laughs> We have reached the end of me reading all of your comments. Uh, sorry if I didn't get to read yours, I tried to pick a few and then I got excited and picked a few more. But this was super super fun and like I said, some of you were straight in there and you had, you know, savage. <laughs> but thank you for sharing your thoughts, I really enjoyed reading them and talking about and discussing my views on them, I hope you enjoyed that too. If you did, do give this video a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button below. If you have any more unpopular musical theatre opinions, do comment down below and I'll respond to you. Thank you very much and I shall see you soon for another video.